Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Real Positive Girl podcast with me, Sabrina. This is the show that's going to help you become your best self. And today we are talking about stop saying tomorrow, start today. Let go of your excuses. But as always, I want to invite you to come say hi to me on Instagram. I am at Sabrina Joy Peroso. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to chat with you in the DMs and become friends online. You can also send me an email to realpositivegirlpodcast at gmail.com. I answer all your emails there. And if you want to have a chit chat, if you need some advice, you need some encouragement, I am there for you. Prayer, whatever you need. Um, also, I want to invite you to join the Facebook group that we have going. It is the Real Positive Girl Community Facebook group. And you know, it's it's going. We got we got a few members over there, and I'm trying to schedule live events and um, post uh, resources and get like community discussions going where we can share what we're going through um, and offer each other encouragement, and then eventually do giveaways and all kinds of events and things that are happening. So check that out. There's that is in the links in the show notes below. And lastly, I wanted to let you know that. It is finally time for people to start signing up for the eight-week coaching program that I have going, and it is eight weeks um, teaching you all how to become uh, build to be <laughs> to become mentally tough and build uh, resiliency. Sorry, I'm all tongue-tied today, and it's just going to be so much fun. We're going to do um, some things together as a group, like just really setting intentions for the week and. Uh, learning a lesson together, but then I'm going to be working with everyone one-on-one as much as you need to create your own plan and personalize that coaching for you so that you can succeed and really just become more resilient, being able to bounce back from any problems or setbacks that you are dealing with in your life and just generally become mentally tough so you don't let those things crush you or bother you as much. So check all of that out all in the show notes below. And let's just go ahead and jump into today's episode, which again is stop saying tomorrow start today, let go of your excuses. So I have wasted, just to be honest with you, I've wasted so much of my life living in fear, like being too scared to step out in faith and believe in myself and just try something that I'm passionate about, like truly passionate about, something that I just love and just like oozes from me. You know when something that really gets you going, it just like oozes from you, this like bright sparkle excitement, of like whatever the heck it is, right? And you know, it was always something I knew. I, I I just I was just too scared to step out, and so I always did something that I knew how to do, right? I I always did stuff that I knew I could do without any pushback, you know, without too many um, road bumps that were going to stop me from being able to do it well, because you know I dealt with perfectionism like so much and I felt the the need for me to be perfect in everything I can do, everything I was capable of trying out. And even though I think in the back of my mind, I still knew that perfectionism was unachievable, but I still had to try because other people were putting that expectation on me. I was putting that expectation on myself. It was just, it's wild. It was a wild time. I'm sure we've all been there. But, you know, even when I was a flight attendant, which I was right before we had our daughter, so that was like over 14 years ago. I was a flight attendant, which was so super fun, so super fun. The only reason I left is because I had the baby and, you know, I had our babe and I just, I didn't want to go back. I just wanted to figure out what was going to be in front of me in life. But even when I was a flight attendant, I just knew, I just knew that I could get through all the training and do well at the job. And I really did. And it was so much fun. And I even worked in the emergency department, which again, a lot of fun terrible hours, but so much fun. And I knew that I could handle that chaos. I was like, yeah, I'm completely prepared in my mind to be able to figure out how I need to deal with all this chaos and actually enjoy my life. And I did, but I never had the guts to try like what I'm doing like right now, like here today, uh, which is helping people with their emotional health through this podcast and through personalized coaching. Like I never had the guts to be like, yeah, let's do this. Let's like really dive in to the thing that I like, to the thing that I want to do. But it is a journey, right? It's a journey. Like there are reasons it takes us longer to step up and do things uh, in comparison to some other things where it's just an easier step up. It's not like this whole flight of stairs that you have to climb to the top, feel so exhausted, but then you're so excited because you get there. And then sometimes you realize that you've only climbed one flight and you have like three, five, ten more to go. Ooh, sometimes it can be rough. I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, but yeah, I, there are some reasons why it takes us longer to do other things. And it takes time to learn like new skills 
and be ready for that season of life you want to walk into. But, but this isn't the case all the time. Um, a lot of times we just use this as an excuse. A lot of times we just use this as a reason for us to be like, oh no, it's not time. And sometimes we blame not stepping into or attempting to do things we want to do on not being ready. How many times have you heard people in your life being like, oh, I'm not ready yet. I'm just not ready. I'll know when I'll be ready, which is kind of a, a load of like crap because will you? Because if you haven't been ready all of this time, how do you know that you'll eventually be ready, right? It's like are, you probably just missed out on that. I'm just saying like it's it's tough. It's really tough because this is like a hard mindset to crack, especially if you've been doing it like all of your life. But it's always something about needing to do this and that first before you can move on to the thing that you really want to do, right? <laughs> you, are, you are creating barriers for yourself on purpose because you are self-sabotaging. You are in thick of the self-sabotage. And believe me, I know all about self-sabotage. Uh, if you've heard the past couple episodes, well, probably like in the last like 10 episodes, I have talked about how I spoke with my therapist about how I am continually continuing to self-sabotage myself uh, because I'm afraid of success. I'm afraid of the unknown. I, I worry about whether things are going to work out well or work out mediocre or if there's something that I missed and all of these worries that just continue to <laughs> just fall out of the sky on top of one, on top of another, on top of another. It's just craziness. But yeah, if you want to learn like more about self-sabotage and, you know, understand that for yourself and how to not engage in that anymore, I would encourage you to check out episode 388, so not that far back, and I think that'll really help you. Um, you know, and to be honest with you, waiting until you're ready is just like the most prime chef's kiss excuse. And I do not mean that in a positive way. It's just like, it's the biggest excuse you can come up with, especially if you're a perfectionist. Like I was, I definitely struggled with that. We just always want to be, I'm not ready. I'll do it when I'm ready. But in a sense, you just like, will never be ready, like fully ready, right? And it's interesting to me, this is no shade on anyone, but it's very interesting to me for the people that are like, oh, I'm waiting to have kids until I'm ready. And it's interesting to me because I don't think you'll ever be ready. You can read all the books, you can go to all the classes, you can talk to all the parents that have had kids that are like, you know, have kids that are adults, have kids that are babies, have kids of different ages. Uh, you can get all of the wisdom and knowledge and buy all of the things according to everything that you've researched. But you still won't necessarily be ready because your child will be different from other children. There'll be a lot of similarities, obviously, but there'll be a lot of differences. And all this advice and things that you've racked up may not necessarily work in your journey as a parent. And so it's just a classic example of realizing that you, you'll never be fully ready for anything. You can spend all the time in practice. You just have to do as best you do your best, do the best you can and just go through with what you know. So it's just, it's really interesting to think about people like, oh, I'm not going to do it until I'm ready. And I feel like you can get a certain sense and amount of readiness, but it won't be 100%. And that's okay. There was nothing, you don't have to feel bad about that. There was no, no, no shame there. Absolutely not. So I have had the idea of helping people through personalized mindset coaching for a while now, like a, like a long while. Uh, and it's the reason I started the podcast uh, because I wanted to find a way to help as many people as possible. And I was comfortable with radio since podcasting is basically radio. And I love radio. My dad uh, had a radio station growing up and then he also DJed on different radio stations. And I was very attached to the radio when I was a kid. And as I like my whole like adolescent time, I love the radio. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, I can do this. I can talk into a mic. I can share with people, things that are on my heart. I can do research. I can share knowledge with them. So it's it's super easy to understand and allow them to take bits and pieces and tips with them to better their lives. That's what I can do. Um, but even even but even that took like some time for me to go all in, right? To step fully in and be like, be where I am right now. It was a lot. And I was still, I was still scared. 
um, I had to deal with fears of failure and judgment, right? If people are going to like make fun of me or maybe I was boring or I didn't describe the topics that I was talking about very well. Maybe I didn't do enough research. Maybe I just didn't make it very relatable. I don't know, right? Um, it was also the idea of like being vulnerable. However, I have never had really a big problem with being vulnerable with strangers or other people, like not in like a crossing boundaries kind of way, just more of like, hey, this is what happened to me. If that helps you to feel more comfortable with what you're going through or to give you some advice of what I don't want, I've been through, if you want it, that kind of thing. So luckily I had that going for me because I was totally like an open book. Like, yeah, ask me anything. We can talk about anything. It is totally fine. But yeah, I had to deal with fears of failure and judgment, but something in my mind just like snapped, like that I needed to just get started. So I did. I was just like, I'm waiting too long. I, I have everything that I need. I am just going to go do this. It is on my heart to do this. Why am I wasting all of this time? And then I did it and no regrets. Zero, zero regrets. It wasn't the easiest in the beginning <laughs> and it probably wasn't the greatest. People still listen to that first episode and I really hope they don't base that first episode <laughs> on what I do now, uh, but it's fine. It's just the journey. It's it's the way that we are going from point A to point B, right? Uh, but it, yeah, I just, I hope that that, it really makes an impact on people and be like, oh, this is great. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't easy in the beginning. It was very time consuming. There was trial and error, but it happened and continued to get better, which, you know, as it just continued to grow and become something and for me to, and for me to learn and, and actually ask other people like how I can make things better and taking that advice and really like using what would really help the audience that I was building. And it's just great. It's amazing. So again, I thank you for listening. I really appreciate you <laughs> immensely. Um, and I hope it's going well. If not, leave me an email or tell me on Instagram, what could be better? I am totally open to feedback, like totally, like let me know. Um, but it's the same with coaching. I spent a year telling myself I'm going to do it, right? You know, when you're like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Or you kind of make a plan, you, you put it on your vision board, you're like, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go for that. But then you don't actually put any action steps behind that desire, behind that plan. You don't create a plan. But like nothing exists. You're just like, in my heart, like in my heart, I know. <laughs> in my heart, I know. And I'm like, that's great. But how are you going to push yourself to follow through and really have that accountability if you're not creating a plan, if you're not having it written down somewhere, if you're not making yourself take a step every day or every week or whatever cadence that you choose for that. But, you know, it's just, you have to do those things. But yeah, I spent over a year telling myself I was going to do it and I didn't. And again, fear of failure and judgment and also not being taken seriously, which I'm kind of still dealing with that. Um, but that's okay. I'm still, I'm still battling. I'm still moving forward. And it really doesn't matter what anyone else thinks because it's just their opinion and their opinion is not gospel truth or anything I need to hang my hat on, right? And that is a good message for you to remember as well. I promise you. Um, but lucky for me, and it definitely was lucky for me, someone I had made friends with online, like actually through Clubhouse, and then I met them, saw them in an Instagram live and kind of just like became like, you know, friends online, um, reached out to me. Like he reached out to me and encouraged me to take the leap, take the next step. And I did. And it was so super scary, like when I did commit to doing that, because basically what I did is I committed to having my own coach coach me on how to be a good coach and how to design a program that will be best fit for uh, the people that want to join it and how to actually really serve the people that spend their hard earned money and time with me to help their emotional health and become resilient and become mentally tough. Like I wanted to be really good at that. And so I paid money to do that because it was very, very important to me. It was scary. It was scary investing in myself because I never really had before, right? I was worried that it wasn't going to turn out well uh, and that it was a waste of time <laughs> and that maybe I should have just stayed in my little comfort zone hidden under a rock and not done anything, but then I wouldn't have learned or grown or, or been able to become the thing that I most desired in my heart, right? And I would have just been like so sad. So I am so glad that... I took that leap. And I know we won't always have like those people in our lives. That's why I said I was super lucky to have that person encourage me. Uh, so we're not going to always have those people in our lives to push us down the slide of life. That's when I think about it. Like, you know, 
when you're a kid and you're waiting and you're kind of scared of the slide, but then someone just comes by and just like pushes you from the platform down the slide. We're not always going to have someone that's going to push us down the slide of life and an un and unknown experiences. So we need to also be able to do it for ourselves, be our own person that's like, okay, ready? Let's go. <laughs> ready? No? That's great. Let's go. You'll learn a lot of things on the way. And you know, excuses don't make your life better. That is like the, one of the main points I definitely want to make sure that you understand. Excuses don't make you feel better. It may be what you think that you're saying to yourself that you're not ready or it's not the right time or you need to do this, that, and the other. It doesn't feel like an excuse, but it is. It's an excuse because you don't have a real reason why you cannot do it. Because even if you have like a minor excuse, you could still be like, well, I could kind of start and do like a baby step and just really dip my toe in there. And maybe I don't have all the money to make it super fancy, but it's better to start now than to never start you may never save the money. You may never decide to buy the equipment. Or when you can, you can, you're can. you paralyzed with indecision to buy the equipment that you need. And then you don't want to take the time to understand how to use it. Like there's so many barriers that you can create for yourself in an instant where you just need to not allow yourself to do that. Because excuses don't make you feel better. Excuses also don't fulfill visions and dreams and goals that you have. They actually pull you away from those things. And waiting until tomorrow or Monday or next week, next month, next year, right, will only allow you more time to psych yourself out and just not do it at all. Just be like, throw it away. Like, okay, we're going to see about something else. <laughs> and maybe sometimes we get through the brainstorming process or desires and we realize a, a thing that we want to do. And if you actually take the time to really research it and then you figure out you really can't do it or really it's not the best choice for you to do, that's fine. Move on. But don't allow that to stop you from going after anything else or whatever the next thing is, okay? Um, so, you know, you continue to wait. You continue to put it off. And then you don't do it, right? And then all you're left with is longing, longing that you wish you had done it, regrets, you know, like, oh, man, what did I miss out on? And then hope that you'll one day take the, fi the first step. One day you're like, okay, well, one day I'm going to get there. One day I'm going to make a difference. One day I am going to move forward. And hope is nice. Hope is nice and all. It can make us feel like alive and, and ready to do something, maybe, sometimes. But it's not as nice as action. If you take action, even the smallest little smidgen of action, so much more can come from that. And there's momentum that can happen there as well. So today, I want to share with you five tips on how to let go of excuses so you, those things no longer hold, hold you captive and prevent you from doing the things that you really want to do, the things that you need to do, the things that you have to do. It's super important. Okay, so number one, stop obsessing over what happened in the past. I do this so often. I will think about the past and think about, wow, that went really terribly, <laughs> or that didn't go well, or I can't believe I let that happen, or wow, I am really bad at that. There are so many things that come to mind when I start obsessing over the past, my particular self, and of course, if I start that line of thinking, yeah, I'm going to talk myself out of whatever the thing I was going to do, especially if it is like directly connected, right? It can be really scary because you're like, well, look at all this crap that happened before. I don't want to have it, have it happen again. We're taking a big risk. Oh, no. But you cannot live your life without taking a few risks or it's going to be really boring. You're not going to achieve and get what you want. And you're kind of just letting it waste away. Like, that is not very responsible. Like, do, like enjoy your life. I feel like it's everyone's single duty to enjoy their life as much as they can, which is why I harp on don't sit in a pit of despair. Don't lean into your negativity. Honor and accept those emotions, but then move forward and create a problem-solving plan and just keep it moving, right? So stop obsessing over what happened in the past. The past doesn't necessarily dictate what's going to happen in the present or in the future. Sometimes it can, but that's why when you go through things in the past, you glean the information, the most important information from that event, and you bring it into the next experience so it can be better, stronger, and you're more capable of dealing with whatever comes at you. So stop obsessing over what happened in the past. Number two, stop comparing yourself to others. This is really tough. 
lucky. It sucks. Especially in this world where we live in social media and all we're doing all day is just like scrolling through what everyone else is doing and their great lives and how amazing everything is for them. And then there's some people that do share real life. Like today on TikTok, I shared a great video of how much of a disaster my house is right now because I'm so focused on creating content. I am so focused on, you know, making sure my coaching program is going to be top notch. I am so focused on getting all of that business stuff going and still staying on top of the other content that I do regularly, like the podcast and things like that, that my house is just fall in the shambles. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> but it can be hard and I could start feeling shame about myself and being upset with myself if I'm continually looking at all these Instagram homes and they're so clean and neat and realizing, well, I mean, they have the time. They have the time more than I do with everything I've put on my plate or they've just paid someone else to clean it, which I have that option of doing it. I just choose not to. <laughs> and, you know, me comparing myself to them, especially since I am in a different season of life, I am doing different things. I am going after goals in a different way. It's not going to be the same. There is no way to compare, right? And they went through different struggles and setbacks getting to where they are now. There are so many things behind the curtain that we do not know that are happening at all. It's just a waste of time to compare ourselves to others. And now I'm, I say that, but I know it's hard to actually do in practice because I still do that. I still compare myself to others. I'm like, man, why can't I be like them? Or I've done all those things. Why are my outcomes not the same as theirs, right? But we have to like rein it in and shift our mindset and be like, okay, listen, Yes, they're doing all these cool things that you want to do. You can do cool things that are similar to this. You just have to find your own path to get there. And maybe you'll realize along that path that it isn't the right thing for you and you need to turn around or take a different road and do something else. So stop comparing yourself to others. It's not productive. It's definitely not efficient. It doesn't give you anything to learn from. It only makes you feel worse. So enjoy and embrace who you are, where you are, where you're going. And celebrate them for where they're going and where what they're doing because that's still good on them. It's just you don't need to be a reflection of them. Number three, create a goal setting plan with tons of tiny steps. It's funny when I trip over my own words because I'm like, I wrote those words. <laughs> Why am I tripping over them? Um, create a goal setting plan with tons of tiny steps. I want to emphasize tons of tiny steps because... A lot of times we'll make a goal plan, you know, goal setting plan. It'll have like five milestones on it and maybe it's set up to be done in like five months. And so there's one milestone per month. And even that can seem a little overwhelming. You're like, crap, I only have one thing to celebrate in this whole 30 days, 31 days. And that seems like so much for me. I want to, I want to celebrate something every week. Okay, write that in right? You don't have to create your goals or accomplish your goals based on a plan that like everyone else uses because that could work for someone. That could work like, okay, they're going to rev up to celebrating that milestone that happens at the end of the month, feel good about themselves, and then come back down and then do it again and again and again. But maybe you're like, no, I need more reassurance. I need more understanding that I'm actually moving forward. I need something to remind me and tell me I'm on the right track every single week or every few days. It's like whatever you want. So create a goal setting plan that has tons of tiny steps, tons of things you can check off and be like, look, I move forward. Look, I'm achieving this. Look, I am still going as opposed to having less and nothing for you to really look forward to like hitting and achieving and feeling good about yourself. And that will help you let go of excuses because you're allowing yourself to do it at a very slow pace, one that probably works better for you or whatever pace it is that you choose. And then you can't really make any mistakes because you're allowing yourself the slowest road towards the goal or desire or vision. So create a goal setting plan with tons of tiny steps. Number four. Number four, um, you might, I hope you're not offended. Because you know I mean this all in love and care and we're like besties, right? Stop being a victim. It is incredible to me how many people live their life with a victim mentality 
and don't even realize it. You know, you're, you're passing off blame for things not working out onto everyone else. You're not taking responsibility for your own mistakes and failures. And you are just saying, woe is me. Join my payday party. Everything is terrible for me. I can't do this, that, and the other because of all these made-up excuses. And so if you want to let go of excuses, you got to let go of being a victim. No more victim mentality. Take responsibility when things don't work out and it was your fault. That's okay. There's no shame in that. People will think that they're shame in it. Don't believe them. There's not. You are deciding to take responsibility, take ownership, and be like, yep, I messed up here. But this is what I learned from it. And this is how I'm going to be better next time or the next thing or whatever is coming next. <laughs> Next, next, next. So it's totally okay to fall on your face and experience mistakes and failures. That is totally fine. So, but just just realize that you need to be in charge. I mean, we are. We are all in charge of our own, like decisions and attitudes and mindsets. But, but by thinking you can just pass it off and make it someone else's responsibility because it feels like it's less work for you, and you don't look as bad, you still look bad. I'm just here to tell you, you still look bad. People just don't tell it to your face because they don't want to hurt your feelings. I'm just being real. So stop being a victim. Take responsibility, okay? Don't have pity parties. Learn to bounce back from those problems and setbacks. And if you struggle with this, you should definitely join my eight-week course, my eight-week program. Sorry, it's not a course. It's not a course because I am there with you live all of the time. (laughs) You should join my eight-week program, all about becoming resilient and mentally tough. It would really help, so consider that. Links are in the show notes. Uh, But yeah, stop being a victim. It's not healthy. And the longer you do it, the harder it will be to get out of that behavior and mindset because you've been in there so long and you think it's okay. And not enough people have probably called you out on it. Okay, number five and the last one. (laughs) Examine what emotion the excuse is masking. So a lot of times we'll make excuses because we are dealing with fear or a fear like fear of failure, fear of success even, right? Fear of judgment. You don't want to deal with other people's opinions. It makes you uncomfortable to go after whatever you're going after because people have told you that you can't do it. No one believes in you. You don't got enough people that have your back. Believe me, I am going through that right now. I don't really have anyone like cheering me on besides my coach and I pay him to do that, but you know, (laughs) and that's fine. But it's like, (sighs) if that's the real reason, then that's great. You need to uncover the thing that the excuse is covering, is hiding from you, right? Because if you don't, if you're not self-aware enough to understand that there is something under there, I'm here to tell you that there is. And you need to like get your shovel in, like dig it up and figure out what the heck it is. Is it one of those things that you're fearful of? Is it having to deal with people's opinions? Is it having people tell you that you can't do something? Is it you just not believing in yourself, being like drowned in self-doubt in your mind? Like, what could it be? You really have to take the time to figure that out, uncover it, decide, okay, am I going to continue to let this emotion hold me back? Because by coming up with an excuse, I'm reacting as opposed to responding. It's important to remember. So examine what emotion the excuse is masking. Figure out how you can, you know, move forward, like honor and accept that emotion, but how you can overcome allowing it to hold you back and be able to nurture and heal that part that's hurting that's you know connect in the connection of creating an excuse and then be able to move forward and not make any more excuses so that's all I have to share with you all five tips on how to let go of excuses and I really hope this has helped you maybe it called some of you out I don't know I like to be called out sometimes it's fairly uncomfortable in the moment but it is super helpful just to be honest with you Um, but yeah so start saying Stop saying tomorrow, start saying today. Do it today, get rid of the excuses, believe in yourself, and um, if you need encouragement on that, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I will be there for you, I promise. Ask anyone that's emailed me, I am there for them. So, well, thank you so much for listening to the Real Positive Girl Podcast. Again, with me, Sabrina, you guys are all fan freaking tastic and I hope that you're sharing the show and you're really enjoying it. Again, check out the show notes below where to find me on Instagram uh, to visit my website to see everything that I offer, to send me an email, to sign up, 
and learn more about my eight-week coaching program all about mental toughness and emotional resiliency and join the Facebook group that is, well, it's, it's, on, it's, it's, it's going to be cool. It is cool and it's going to be cooler every single day. So until next time, have a good one and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.